I am essentially a walking time bomb. And I'm so fucking sorry for that. Holy fuck. <laughs> Hi. Before you guys watch this, yes, there's a condom on my shirt. I'm fully aware. It's just a favorite hoodie, okay? Um, this documentary, the reason why I sort of wanted to react to it, uh, you should don't do reaction content. Uh, you should don't do content, to be fair. And I wish I wish to do more, okay? I will, at some point. Um... I love documentaries. I've made documentaries myself. I do work as a photography videographer on the side, so there's that interest. But then there's also the whole streamer part. This is, you know, the whole fake, not fake life, but showing positivity and just the, the flexing and everything in, on social media, but not showing the, the rough, bad parts that everyone has. I feel like it's very important to sh display that because it tells you that not everyone, everyone has a bad day. And some have it worse than others, and that's okay. Uh, and you need to deal with it. Um, and we should be here for everybody for that, to help out with that sort of stuff. I just want to say huge thanks to Mycom that actually brought this out on YouTube for free. It is completely, it, it is so amazing. If you want to watch the original, I mean, of course, link there. If you want to watch my take on it, cool. Um... Uh, my points is a little bit, of course, personal. I share some personal stuff where I can a little relate to things, but then uh, at the same time, I also um, I, I stream myself. I uh, not comparing myself to the big streamers, but you know, it is hard out there, and it is definitely not easy. And uh, being consistent and all that kind of stuff is also hard because life happens. Anywho, there's. Um, I hope you enjoy it, and um, again, big thanks to. Boogin 2988 and my club. Um, and yeah. I have my coffee and I have my gift bar. And I'm ready. I'm ready to watch this shit. Before just reacting to this, this looks like a real OG. Like this looks like a proper documentary. Um, which seems to be really cool and the just my experience with boogie 2988 is from his character francis back in the day don't hit um and that's kind of who I remember him as. Um, I, I didn't know if he was a character back then because I was a young boy. Um, but, yeah. Uh, and apparently shit has gone sideways big time for him. Um, and he he's a lot... And what, what I think is very interesting is if you're streaming and if you're trying to sort of quote-unquote make it and you see other people making it and you don't make it yourself, I... But at the same time, I'm not really giving it 100%, so it's also that. You know, I'm here sometimes making people laugh, and then I'm not here. Then I'm here, and then I'm not here. And then I'm sometimes streaming at 3, when I'm supposed to be streaming at 12. So there's all that. Or, or, and maybe one day, boom, followers go, boom, you become famous. One day, boom, overnight success, boom. Um, anywho. Um, He's in his 50s now and trying apparently desperately to stream, making content and to sort of stay financially alive. Um, and he's aiming for content creating to do so. I think most people would look for a job. Like, and I'm not trying to sound like an asshole now, but like, you know, going out there and actually like being a customer support person or something. Nothing, not that there's anything wrong with that. Customer support is really, really important. And a lot of people take it not too serious. And that affects the company a lot. 
I've had experience with that. I'm not working as a customer service myself, but I, I yeah, I've worked at companies that uh, struggle with it. Anywho, off topic. This is gonna be very interesting. Let's get into it. When I'm on my deathbed, the biggest regret I have. when I'm on my deathbed, the biggest regret I have I will ever have is knowing. Hold on. Sorry. I just know that I need to do this sooner or later anyways. Mac, it's max volume. However, it's not that high. Close this. There we go. That I had a job that every person in the world would fucking kill for. And I fucked it up. I'm Be mad about that till I go to the fucking grave. Bogey two nine eight eight. He's a legend of YouTube. He's been around forever. The, the whole, I would love to do something like this, documentary, like, holy fuck, this is so good. For a period of nine months, I had exclusive access to his day-to-day, -day uh, let's go back, actually, sorry. This film documents the life of Boogie2988, following his downfall from internet fame. For a period of nine months, I had exclusive access to his day-to-day -day schedule, personal contacts, and financial statements. Again, real shit. <clears throat> uh, there was one girl. Topics explored in this film could be upsetting to some viewers. Raw. Let's go, man. I don't know if I should talk about this, Mike, but I'm going to. There was one girl that I dated. She liked a lot of childish things. She liked rubber ducks. That's why I have some of these rubber ducks. And one of my favorite memories with her is us sitting in this tub, her playing with rubber ducks as I, I washed her and then I, when we got out, I took her to bed. One of the best nights of my life, Mike. <coughs> right here. Yeah, so when it comes to financial approach, I don't fucking know what I'm doing. Money comes in, money goes out. For the longest time, my ex-wife handled that shit, but then I got divorced. I don't know where my money is. I don't know what it's doing. The only thing I've ever done with it is I threw it in the crypto and then lost a shitload of it. Well, here's everything. If you want to see, there's $2,758 2, in my bank account right now. And let's see if mortgages come out yet. So tomorrow, when they take mortgage out, I'll have about $700 to live off of until the 20th when I get paid again from YouTube. So I'm just going to live off of $700. And I'll probably sell some cards along the way and use that money to make ends meet as well. I have a credit card with them that I owe $600 on. And on top of that, I still owe $163,000 on my house. I think my net worth is zero. Once you, I'm pretty sure it's minus. Pull the equity out of the house, get rid of the house debt, sell off all my collectibles, and pay off all my debts. I think that puts me at zero dollars. Shit, I'm worthless. It's kind of interesting how he's like, I, I man. I'm getting fucking emotional about this shit. Like, he says he's worthless because he's valuing shit in money. Which is to some degree true, you know. Well, that's not, it's obviously not true. It's just. I have an easy way of feeling like shit if you're not in a good financial position. He said there 
before before the whole tax thing there like for everything else the but I, like i'm not saying that I'm, I'm definitely not in a similar situation i'm not but like he said i have 700 to live on and i'm like hmm that's kind of what i have to live on each month to some degree yeah and i've had like i've struggled a bit financially uh had like family and stuff help me but It's just other like the view of how people view money and what's what what's a lot, what's a, not a lot. It's, you know. And then when you feel like you have a lot of money, you feel you. It's not like you feel a lot better. I don't think it's just that you don't have to worry about it. But if you do have to worry about it, then that's really stopping you from feeling happy and alive and shit. We're three minutes in, by the way. There we go. Yeah, this is the hard part. Back to reality. Oh. Oh. Spider gastric bypass buggy continues oh. to struggle with his weight. He is attempting oh. to save the 20,000 to remove the excess skin. But my best feature. This is the one the ladies love. I call it my meat apron. I have two meat curtains. There's a second one. I have two glorious meat curtains. I don't like showing it to people and people don't like seeing it. So that's why I'm going to die alone. Well, my real name is Steve Williams. Uh, I'm known online as Boogie2988 because there's a lot of famous Steve Williamses and I'm not one of them, right? Uh, I started a YouTube channel back in 2006, right at the very beginning. And I... Fuck, this brings out a real side of me. I, I usually don't fucking get teary. Ah. Holy fuck. Got famous for comedy sketches as well as like... I am. I think I'm actually gonna upload the whole thing on YouTube as well. I God forbid I I put out content, life vlogs, or videos, and, and just sharing my personal life with other people. What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? Boogie to nine eight eight. That's how I remember it. On my left leg and head. Um, but that's just the kind of woman I married. So give her some love <coughs> in the comment section. Give her as much money as I used to make, and it's not exactly enough to make ends meet. Holy this is where I spend fuck! Six to eight hours a day. Trying to figure out how to <coughs> save my career. What's up? Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, we're going to 90 Day Clash of Lava's Guide to the Power of the Internet. Today, let's talk a little bit about why you got to do better than I did. Right? I've told the audience, I've told you guys, I've told everybody, this is the center of my world. Right here in this recliner with my dogs, watching television, playing video games on that television. But the other day, <laughs> the audio on this TV started to go out, and whenever it would make like S sounds, it would crackle. And so, I know I'm budgeting, but I immediately went to Amazon and bought a sound bar for a hundred bucks. And then the next day, the TV stopped crackling, and now I have a hundred dollar sound bar that I don't need. But I know I'm supposed to be budgeting right now, but because that's mm -hmm. my TV, because that's my only source of entertainment, because it's the only thing I do, it's one of the only things that bring me peace. Like, I'm like, I have to be able to hear my fucking TV. I, I love this. It, I feel like this has a view of a lot of people out there. You have an X amount of money to, like, you know, keep afloat every every month. Would I buy a soundbar? Would I spend something $100 if I had $700 or $800 left? Yeah, I would. Where would it hurt? Where would it like, okay, now I really need to, at 200, at 200, I'm like, okay, to really fucking, no going out, being home, cook food, just, you know, and that is very similar to what he is doing, I'm guessing. But that's every addict, right? Like Mitch Hedberg said, I'll just do enough heroin, and then he like, OD on heroin, right? So I guess every addict tries to manage the addiction but I don't know, man. 
We were talking about compulsive spending a minute ago. Yeah. Dude, I spent a lot of stuff on, a lot of money on stuff. I have friends that does this, that spends a lot of money on a lot of stuff that they're passionate about. I don't do this. I, I, I usually, what the fuck do I spend my money on? I guess, I guess it's the every odd game there. I guess it's buying a little more of an expensive meat. And, like, you spend your money out elsewhere anyways. But, like, certain things you go, like, yeah, that seems a bit unnecessary. You know where a lot of the money went? But it makes them happy, right? And, like, it felt really compulsive at the time. Mm the fuck between 2008 2001 Boogie spent over 200,000 on sex damn I am a former sex worker escort and Boogie 2988 was one of my clients from LA and I get a message on this website you can probably guess which one from this guy who looked a lot like Boogie I took women on vacations and I took them out to fancy dinners and I took them to like Disneyland and shit. He bought me dinner, he got me a purse that we were talking about over messages, and he got me a couple gift cards and he spent well over 5000 on just that night. You know the rules. The rules are we're going to go out and eat, we're going to have dinner, maybe we're going to fuck, and you're going to enjoy a nice lifestyle that you don't normally get to enjoy. So he was really funny. You can definitely tell he was nervous. Um, he did eat a lot of food. I'm pretty sure he got two entrees, which was very unique. It's not a revelation. I like beautiful women. I like to hang out with beautiful women. Fuck beautiful women. We all do. I never got to do that. The women I dated were pretty, sure. But they were like Arkansas eights. <laughs> Not LA tins with sugaring. I got to fuck some LA tins, and I think that's cool. We got back to the hotel. I, I love that he's just so fucking raw about it. And I do regret to say that I slept with Boogie 2988. Overall, the experience, and I don't mean to fat shame or anything, but there was rolls upon rolls upon rolls, and it took me a lot of time to find a stick. I am now married with two kids, and sleeping with Boogie is one of the reasons I quit sex work. Is that sexist to me? Sure. Is that demonizing me? Sure. I don't really care. Um, I'm a 48-year-old man. I never got to fuck a model. This let me fuck a couple of models. Is that wrong? Here we have some of the women in this area that are local and ready to go out. They'll go to dinner with you. They'll go to a show with you. Maybe they'll come back to your place. But they are expecting something in exchange. Uh, but then it's window shopping, right? Like any other meat market like Tinder, you kind of scroll down the, the list of photos until you find someone that looks interesting to you. I think this girl's really cute. Oh yeah, yeah. She's definitely a little thicker than I necessarily would always go for, but there's nothing wrong with that. So I deserve to go to Disney. 25 female, Rogers, Arkansas, United States. Always down for a fun time. Fuck. It's... You you know that this is happening, right? But you just, because you're not there yourself, you just... I don't know. It feels so out of this world to some degree. Disneyland with a beautiful girl, right? I deserve to go to, to New York and explore Times Square with a beautiful girl, right? Like, I deserve that, and I want that, and I've never had it. Man, if I had that money back, that would be half of my mortgage right now. That $1,000 is my entire health insurance payment. I don't know what the prostitutes did with it, and I hope they spend it in, in good health. Uh, but I sure could use that shit right now, you know? What, you wanna go for a walk? So you can, he knows. He, you can't tell me he doesn't know. 
Leo up, <laughs> baby. I know. We'll go in a second. I got he asked him because he want to feel happy, right? You are my son. You are my happiness. You, yeah, there you go. You're my therapist and best friend. You're not just a dog. A damn. You gotta prep your brother. And that also costs. He's great. He's actually, I, I actually really love him a lot. Leo. I know how much these things mean to you. What's it like to have to sell them to be able to live? So selling off these things kind of sucks because I've been playing Magic for 30 years and some of the cards- Why the fuck am I getting so emotional? Holy fuck. Uh, sorry. Well, not sorry. This is what you get. Everybody's emotional sometimes. Holy fuck. It's in this box. I it literally needs to give up everything. Opened back in 1994. I opened them in like 96. The, the small sort of happiness he needs to take out in order to just survive. Held on to them ever since, and that's a, like they're a piece of my childhood. How do you survive? Honestly, I'm. I was gonna say, how do you not? How do you not kill yourself? If you sell off everything you have, every happiness, everything that may like the small things, or even a bigger thing like a dog. If he sells his dog here in the video, I wouldn't be surprised. But how do you get up from that? When you have so little to live for, and the little thing you have to live for also disappears, how do you not give up? Although they're a piece of my. I really hope people don't give up. Because just, you know, it's a. Sometimes shit, sometimes good. History. I thought I was going to get buried with this stuff. This, just, is, this is my stuff. This is me. You this know, is live through it. And uh, I made some money off of YouTube last month, but I did not make... Sorry, what, what other thing? The whole... Sometimes, like, because, you know, life can really suck sometimes. And, um... I sometimes look at older people and feeling proud for them. Because just being 80, 70 or something... That's not easy. A lot of people take the short way out. Which is... Yeah. I don't think the right way to go, but fuck. Yeah, change fuck. Make enough without a sponsor it's, you know, or something like that. I just, I'm not making enough, so we're going to go to the game shop. But this is going to keep me from going out on the, on the streets, right? Like, this is going to keep me in a house. So... I think it's bittersweet. I think he would find it bittersweet. At this pace, Boogie will be bankrupt in six months. I'm selling magic cards on whatnot. I'm selling collectibles on eBay. I'm selling arcade machines locally. I'll sell it all. And I'm going to sell enough to help with mortgage. But I'm also going to sell enough to be able to play magic tonight. Because I don't want people wondering why I'm not there. I don't want people like... Knowing I'm broke, like that's embarrassing. I can't afford thirty dollars to play magic, so I'm spending thirty bucks to play magic tonight. Okay, so this month I need from you about a thousand dollars to make mortgage. So I need you to pick out like a thousand dollars for stuff. Like there's a couple of cradles in there. Mm -hmm. There's a city of traders in there. Well, I could do two hundred a piece on those. What? Dude, I thought we were looking more like 400, 450 on each of these. 175 is what it's down to. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Those Good took lord, that Thanks. took a beating. Fuck, these are reserved list cards, Glenn. Yeah? They're not going anywhere but up. Okay. Well, you say that, but the dual lands went down. I mean, yeah, all right. As long as I'm getting mortgage money, as long as I get some cards there tonight, okay. You, you do you, you gave me these back, mm -hmm. you know, to set on until I come back in here because I'm not going to sell them anybody else again. Okay. Two, no, make it three chicken quesadillas. 
What's paying for this? Shit, you're paying me back on my hair. <laughs> that don't hurt. Yeah, we all look the same in a game shop. It's because we're fucking mm. outcasts. We're in a kind of small town. We're fucking autistic as shit. We're awkward around women. We're awkward around people. We don't know what the fuck we're doing. And then I come back here and I'm looking at all the shit I need to sell. And I'm surrounded by all the shit that I bought for YouTube videos and stuff. And it's hard to not think about what a fuck up I am. But that's why I go to the arcade. That's why I go to play Magic. That's why I have my friends over. Because for just a few hours, I'm not that fuck up from YouTube. I'm just Steve Williams. I'm just me. Oh, this is, this is my Saturday night crew. We get together every Saturday. We eat pizza, we play Magic, we play board games, we do Smash Brothers. <laughs> Magic the Gathering, this is my crack, this is my cocaine. I met him at the Magic Shop. I met him in the Magic Shop. Now him, I met at the Magic Shop. This guy, I met at the Magic Shop. This guy I met uh, at the Magic Shop. This guy I met because he was a roommate with a friend I met at the Magic Shop. Okay, so I have a million dollar question for you guys. Every Saturday we get together. Mm -hmm. Every Saturday I order what? Pizza, chicken fingers, tacos. Those are the things I normally get us, right? Like I normally spend like a hundred, hundred fifty dollars oh, no. every Saturday to like feed us. Can ask for money. And like I showed them my bank books today, oh. and I'm not like I never <clears throat> wanted to burden you guys with this, but like I'm at a point where saving three hundred dollars a month would be useful. I mean, we've, we've been telling you for years that we don't care about the food that much. Okay. Yeah. Like, don't like, don't get me wrong. I like having for years. Emphasis. Oh, he's just gonna explain that he's not gonna do it anymore. Snacks and soda when I'm over here because I don't eat those at my house. Right. But we've, I mean, we definitely said it throughout the years. Like, you don't have I, to feed us, but you you, you do it anyway. So when are we gonna start bringing girlfriends around? Also, when are we going to start bringing girlfriends around that aren't hookers? Because <laughs> that's all I've brought around for five years. I mean, like, we haven't had, like, legitimate girlfriends over in a long time. You haven't dated in, in a while. You haven't dated in a while. I mean, yeah, a while. That's fair enough, yeah. I mean, you've, you've like, had some... I think, like a I think he's a good guy, yeah. I think that... What makes it like that? There's this niche, the, the nerd, you know? And this is such a... You know, play video games, don't get girlfriend, la la la. I'm, I wonder if it's the same with g girls as well, they don't have boyfriends. They, of course there is. Why? Why the fuck is it? Is it because you're just out of touch? Is it because you're just, your focus is just elsewhere? I wonder how much free time this person actually has. Because that's the thing that sort of like, you need to free up a lot of free time. To hang out with a partner. Willing to sacrifice for it? Is it the appearance? What, what is it? I think a, a mix of both and just... I, I feel like appearance is important. It shows that you take care of yourself. To some degree. To some degree. Not fully. Is that why? Boogie's definitely a, a good guy. Uh... He loves his friends and his family, and he cares about people a lot, and he cares about what people think about him a lot. He's a fun person to be around and to laugh and make jokes with. And sometimes we open up and we have, like, really personal conversations, and I enjoy getting to know him. And By the way, I don't know if at this point you like me being serious and hearing me having a condom shirt. I like this hoodie, okay? By the way, there's a condom on my shirt. Let's get, you know, I am aware of it. just feel like I need to get that out in that way as well willing to do things for us he's offered to you know take care of us or offered us a room if he needs it um he's still gonna make some of the same jokes you know we all have a sort of dry sense of humor sincere kindness uh it's, it doesn't always show up but uh he, he does have a lot of a lot of compassion for people that... i think he's just a guy <laughs> with good and bad but I don't think he's as bad as a lot of corners of the internet think he is. I think as long as he stops tweeting the n-word, he'll be fine. <laughs> the n-word is just a word. Nah, if man. If you guys left, and these cameras weren't rolling, and I was sitting here alone in the dark, and I said the n-word, 
There's no magic power to it. So say it. Oh, no, I'm not going to say it on camera where it could hurt somebody. I like offensive humor. I like dark jokes. I say fucked up shit. I think the darker something. Ah, okay. Very interesting. Very interesting topic. Holy shit. When I started Novus and the whole this... Wait, hold on. Not, we're not bunch of fucking races. Just want to point that out. The Novus is a WoW guild that I created four years ago because I felt like shit. Um, and I've been a guild master and a leader of that for four to five years now. Which is a very long time. And I haven't really covered this on the channel. May, might do that sometime. Um, but um, the whole use of N-word, I've never ever felt comfortable using it. And I don't use it personally. Um, but he touched on something where it's like dark humor should be allowed to be expressed among, among people you're comfortable with. It, when you have a camera in front of you, obviously you're a bit different. Obviously. Um, when you sit in a Discord chat, and just joking around. If you, I, I and I've said this, and the people made fun of, fun, uh, of it, like made fun of the thing I just, I'm just about to say. If you're among friends, obviously you can joke around with things as long as people understand it's a joke. Um, go too far, apologize, obviously. Um, but yeah, I feel like. Even with friends, you need to know who you're saying it to. Um, would they be fine with it? Is it a risk? You know, there's this sort of element there. Online, you're 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 literally saying it to no one and everybody at the same time. There's no longer the three four friends that you know that can take the joke. So I I get both sides of it. I also want to add that um. Joking coming uh, that I am Swedish and Swedish people are very offended uh, or a lot of them are and hey a lot of people are, um, You know are in the world, but Swedes are Usually very offended. How dare you me? What the fuck? How dare you? Okay, here we go <laughs> thing is Cancer rape murder child abuse the darker it is the more important it is to make jokes about it. Oh. Yeah, I feel, I'm sorry. I, yeah, to some degree, I can agree. In 2019, controversial clips of Boogie began to spread online. Mitch, Mitch Jones, uh, Austin, Cycle of an Alcalacox. Oh, you had to go through that, bro. Yeah, that's okay. All right. I mean, I didn't go through it. I'm still alive. She's dead. And, uh, yep, yeah, so fuck her. And now she's dead. That's... Oh, oh fuck. I mean, I didn't go through it. I'm still alive. She's dead. And, uh, yep, yeah, so fuck her. Mocking the death of his deceased girlfriend. I'm still alive. She's dead. Yes, yeah, so fuck her. Now she's dead. And now she's dead. That's a lot of money, I guess, for a person of color. Thanking a minority for. So. Or is it not? I don't know. Someone says you can't put your finger into a clitoris. Somebody here doesn't have a scalpel handy. You splay that fucker. Using tips for just right, you can wrap it. Just play. You can wrap it all around your finger. All around your fingers. You just gotta, you gotta shave real thin. Woo! That's disturbing. That's the most fucked up thing. I've no, I plan to shoot you, bud. Please. You pointing a gun at me? Yes. Committing a grave. What the fuck? Is this what we have to do? Where it really went south is when one guy spent like a month of his time gathering every link, every video clip, everything I'd ever said or done since 1998, and he compiled it into this one huge mega thread. It's like 10, 15 pages long. And every time my name would get mentioned on Reddit moving forward, they would all link to that mega thread. Well, these people on Reddit began to bombard- Abuse his wife, supported child abuse. Had attraction to minors, mocked racial minorities, lied about mental health diagnosis, claimed good things came from the Holocaust. I'm just gonna go through this. Uh, threatened to kill his own dog. It was his friend's death to promote a new channel. Made fun of him. Where's the parents? Threatened suicide to guilt fans to support fake harassment. Made him also to flirted with his friend's widow after his death. Misused Patreon. Funds on personal toys, manipulated his sh sugar babies and girlfriends, lied about weight loss, progress to get Make support. Make me look as bad as possible. 
every time my sponsors to make blame this audience for not meeting new year's resolution as bad as possible every time i got a new sponsor they would bombard me and uh eventually they dropped me Are you ready? Are you ready to step back into 19... Oh, how the fuck did you get back from that? 1988? You ready to go back to my childhood? Because that's what's behind the star. You know what, do you want to know what this represents to me? This is everything that was good about my childhood. And when I walk back in here, it's like going back in time, except things aren't completely shitty. So this is... The classic. I mean, I even have a pack. I wonder if people see this documentary as sympathy or this is the same thing if just like begging for money and begging for claim to fame again. I honestly don't think so. I honestly feel like as long as you are raw and tell even the most secret things and just being all out there, it can help people. It can honestly help people because if someone goes through this amount of shit, and for some reason still finds a reason to be here believe it or not that's still inspirational man tattoo this is the game i most identify but what was pointed out in most of this i had no clue about i remember him as Frankie, you know that guy with because it's about a little round guy running through a maze trying to figure shit out eating everything in sight and getting chased by ghosts of his past. So I'm basically Pac-Man. I know, it's simple fun. And, uh, I mean, look at the guy, he looks like me. Uh, I, I might have Bogey sprained, his sprained it or broken it or something. I was walking to the bathroom in there and there was a loud snap sound and things kind of shifted in one direction. And now my foot is swelling into my shoe and it hurts really badly. It's the fun part about being old and fat. You never know. You don't know if you'll wake up tomorrow. You don't know if today is that stroke or heart attack you've been waiting on. Or if it's going to be a healthy day and you feel real good for change. You never know. Damn. So I don't know. You can fucking be today. Do I think I'll make 50? Yeah, probably. That's only two years away. Do I think I'll make 60, which is 12 years away? Probably not. Here's everything that's wrong with Boogie. Low testosterone. Testicular hypogonadism. Sleep apnea, swelling due to blockages of lymphatic flow, seboric eczema, chronic back pain, protein in urine. That's from kidney damage, folks. That is everything keeping me alive. We have Losartan, Tramadol, Buprofen, Sertraline. Uh, did I, I deal with back pain? I deal with nightmares? I'm always tired. I don't know the last time I did sleep. Otherwise, if I don't wear this machine at night, yeah. when I'm supposed to be sleeping, I'm actually drowning in my own fat. Uh, high blood pressure, history of gastric bypass, intestinal malabsorption, vitamin D sufficiency, because like most gamers, I hate the sun, morbid obesity, major depressive disorder, major anxiety disorder, history of diabetes mellitus, blood pooling in veins, varicose veins of the legs with complications, degeneration of lumbar or lumbosacral interver intervertebral disc. That means my back don't work so good. History of basal cell carcinoma, that's cancer. And of course I can't breathe so good, so asthma and allergies as well. So it's a waiting game now. And it's just about making the best of it. Just enjoy what you got when you got it. 
Sometimes that's a chicken quesadilla. Fucking uh, hell. I wanted to make like a documentary mm. that was generally entertaining. You realize, wait a second, everything he says is depressing. Everything he says is like the saddest shit I've ever heard. That would be half of my mortgage right now. $10,000. And it's just about making the best of it. This is the first documentary we're, I'm doing. I can't put out a documentary that's this guy the whole time. Because I don't want my brand new channel uh, to be known as making documentaries about the most depressing people that exist. It's just mm. like, what the fuck happened to this guy? What the fuck happened to Boogie? I'm a mental health counselor, community and YouTube consultant assist. Well, he's losing what made people originally like him. It, it could be as simple as just that positive attitude. Why not use your only life to make the lives around you better? Fuck you, it's none of your fucking business. It's my body, it's my choice, eat shit. And over time, in the content, yeah. you see this shift where he starts to become more interested in money. I just like making content. I just like talking to a camera. I just like doing cool stuff. I just want ad revenue. I just want YouTube to pay me a fair amount. It's all I've ever wanted, right? And his concerns about money. If I could teach you anything, it's to hold on to the money you get. Oh, are you trying to manipulate people into giving you money? The answer is yes. Give me some money. And more interested in complaining. I couldn't be more grateful. I couldn't be more grateful to people. Want to comment? Thank you. Holy fuck. You're just taking shit for granted, I guess. I'm a walking embarrassment, dude. We do. Look at me. I'm fucking disgusting. Better I'm a piece of shit. I will never function the way you function. It's not possible. Um, that's why if you're griping to your viewers, if you're complaining to your subscribers, I mean, that just leaves a sour taste in people's mouths. Yeah. I think my window's closing. And if it's not closing already, it's it's already closed. Right, so if there was money to be made in making people feel depressed, I think Boogie would be in the right business. Like that's just my life philosophy at this point. Just face down in the mud. That's that's pretty much how we live our lives. Pay the bill, medical bill, that, rise costs. That's right around the corner. Like, uh -huh. I have to sell this place. I have to. I have to tap into the equity to survive. Like that's the last of my money. And. Six hundred fifty. So much of that money is going to. What day is it? Appointments it's and kind of tests interesting. and all of that is just to fucking stay alive. Till the twentieth. People do that, right? Your paycheck comes. All right. Got this much. And you split this or save most of it for the next 20, 30 days. And unexpected things happen during those 20, 30 days. Every month. Who's under me? Oh, hold on. Thank you. Ah. Plenty of different content creators to have various mental illnesses all over social media. And some just say, it is what it is, and this is what I'm going to do. Boogie tends to be really obsessed with this idea that it's favorable to have people feel sorry for you and that kind of victim uh, mentality where you can get further in life if uh, people have compassion on you, regardless of the reason they're doing it.
I look awful. If I look like I've been through hell over the last couple of days, it's because I have been. Most notably, I've ruined my body. Like Jerry, I ruined my own career. Maybe it was the imposter syndrome. Maybe it's because I... <laughs> it's been a, a method of... I, I think covert narcissism is the right phrase. Like, oh, look at how pathetic I am. You should feel sorry for me. You would never be mean to me because I'm so pathetic, right? Oh, I'm so fat. I'm so... A covert narcissist essentially worms their way into your heart. They do this with tales of misfortune and woe. Weird. I'm so goofy. I'm such an old man. I'm so... I'm such a... I grew up in an abusive family and an abusive home. The amount of pain that's in my head and my heart is... So vulnerable narcissism has a number of characteristics. Uh, a person can be considered a vulnerable narcissist without having them all. So with vulnerable narcissism or covert narcissism, we see pessimism. I feel defeated and confused and lost all the time, every day. Hypersensitivity to criticism. I can't handle this kind of hate. I can't handle these types of attacks. I can't do it. Reactive anger, so they're not really thinking things through. Is this what I have to do? <laughs> who goes by Boogie2988 was booked into the jail this morning. Need for admiration. Can I get a round of applause? <laughs> the self-centeredness. I'm the perfect victim. I have been victimized my entire life. The sense of entitlement. If you guys want to help me pay for my Tesla, please go ahead and dig deep. I sure would like a free fucking Tesla. Leaving oneself to be special. How many kids went on to get 4.5 million YouTube subscribers? One. Nine. Steven uh, Williams! You're just watching the same things over and over again. What's up? Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie Tiny, I'm going to draw this with the power of the internet. This is my family series. My daughter's family series. I remember that guy. He made me laugh. His fall from grace is so catastrophic. Not happy about it. People are sick of the shtick. I'm just gonna self-reflect a little bit. Back up a bit. What I just saw other people reacting to that. Is that horrible? Making videos about someone else's life in order to get views. And now, step back even further. What I'm doing, if I'm posting this on YouTube, would that be horrible? Interesting. I'm going to give it some thought. I might forget about it. That um, would be funny. That would be funny if I did forget about it, because a lot of people probably do when they make videos like this. On the, to some, uh, Let's take care of it right now. Oh, to some degree, that is... If you have an angle that it like and truly and if you truly feel this way that you have an angle that can be helpful to other people then to some degree I think that that's okay but if the if it is straight about money views everything like that which can be fine but as long as you hurt someone it's no longer fine what I'm doing right now it's like I'm interested in the documentary part of it. I'm interested in how someone can fall and then just take my own takes on this, which is a re 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 like reacting video. <coughs> reacting content. Is that bad? I don't know. Depends on what it is, I guess. And what would you recommend to him now uh, to get his viewers back? I don't think he's getting his viewers back. I don't think that's a possibility. I think the only thing to do now is go a different angle. But I don't even know if that's possible. I mean, it, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but how do you change yourself? Like, viewers are smart. Like, they want to see you. They want to see what you're interested in. I don't know. you got to get a job. Maybe in this case, GameStop. Wait, GameStop? Didn't they, like, go out of business? Boogie agreed to attempt to get a real job. This here? I have... I oh, I, I have some some sort of... Um, 
I was depressed for about two years. I wasn't like clinically depressed, like or like doctor telling me I'm depressed. I'm more like I feel like fucking shit. And then the the idea of going back to a job, and the idea of what can I go back to, and if you're limited by that choice, then you really don't want to get a job. You'd be like, oh no, fuck this. Starting over. My name is Dawn. Dawn, I'm Boogie or Steve. I set Boogie up with a professional staffing agency Steve? based in Arkansas. Okay. Yeah. What do you prefer to be called? Honestly, Steve. probably Steve. Let's go with Steve. Okay, Steve. They're no problem. Of his, Whatever you prefer. Him or his content. And so you are here today because you are seeking employment. Yeah. You're seeking out new work opportunities. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about your background and where you think you want to go with the experience that you already have. Holy um, fuck. I did work at a small gaming store back in 2006, 2007. I am disabled, uh, recognized by the state of Arkansas, but also the United States government. There's that. Now, the downside to that is I am extremely depressed. So there's some mental health issues that we bring to the table. And then physically, I, I am morbidly obese. I have no references, uh, no work history, and no education. And when you Google my name, you might see rumors that I beat my ex-wife and I am also a pedophile. Should mention I'm also a felon. Okay. Uh Fuck. <laughs> That can't have been easy, going in like that. Uh, What's the nature of your felony? Aggravated assault. How old is it? About two years. Okay. So I think there are some avenues you could explore. I definitely don't think it's impossible, but you have some challenges. Yeah. Lots of things in life are about your mindset and you're using weight and disability, I can't, I can't, I can't. If that is the attitude that you're gonna have when you approach everything, then you can't, and you won't. I did work in the porn industry for the better part of seven years, so uh, I mean. Be real with me. Do you really think it would be a good idea to go to a real interview and reference porn? No, of course not. It depended on the job, I would think. Like, at a strip club maybe, but probably not in a more professional setting. <sighs> Uh, what would you think his chances are here of getting employment in the next three months? I'm not sure when it comes to the felony. We would have to seek cor corporate approval for that sort of charge in order to proceed forward with a candidate. And they would ultimately be the ones to make the decision as to whether or not we would feel comfortable presenting. Fuck. Look at that mugshot, dude. It's like, yeah, well, fuck this. Someone like that to our clients. Because name of the corporate violent approval. Crimes, violent yeah. crimes or sexual crimes. Um, hey, Mike. Uh, listen, dude. Uh, I know we're making this documentary and everything, and I know you think I need to get a real job, but I just want to let you know I'm not going to. I I'm not going to walk into some job. When I have 4 million subscribers on YouTube, I'm one of the original YouTubers. What I'm going to do instead is go back to making content, go back to telling stories and entertaining people and making money doing it. And you want to check back with me in a couple of months? Let's see how things are going. All right? I'll talk to you then. Three months go lay down. Go lay down. Go lay down. Good job. Did he? Please say. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, things aren't great. Um, people are still mad at me on YouTube. Uh, my view numbers are pretty much close to zero. I'm having trouble breaking 10K on an upload right now. And uh, uh, not, not everything is bad. I've got at least one good thing going on. The dogs? Show you. I'll find you when you least expect it. So this is uh this is Dazzy. You can call her Des, Desiree. Yep. 
Desiree. We've been dating now for months. A couple months, yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't know what it was. It was, I guess it's his energy, his, his curly hair, his glasses. I'm, I must be into nerds. It's, I guess, I don't know. He's just adorable to me. I like him. He was going through a lot and I randomly hit him up on Instagram and I told him that I, you know, I support him and that I'm always here for him and stuff. And so it, it started from there. On paper, it just doesn't really add up. Right, it doesn't make sense on paper, but then practice and the reality, there was just something there. So it was pretty crazy, but I just felt it. I felt I felt an energy connection to him before I even met him, and I don't know. That's just that's just how it is. And then the longer we spent talking, I don't know. Eventually, you just realize we're the same person, doing the same thing, living the same lives, just at different stages, and. I can see myself getting married to Boogie. I could definitely, I could definitely see us getting married. In fact, even just because you're 18 doesn't mean you're an adult. When you're 25, you're a new adult. When you're 30, you've been an adult for a while. Boogie knows this, but still, allowing her to take these steps. Has he warned her? Or is he just desperate enough to not even ask, like, talk about it to her? Being completely real. Are you sure you want to be with me? That sort of stuff. Alright, let's go. Uh, yeah. I, we may or may not have talked about it a little bit, and we may or may not sit around fantasizing about it and thinking about what it's going to look like and and I called you wifey the other day, and you loved it. You were yeah. so there for it. If I proposed right now on camera, what would you do? No, no, no. Yes. That's a good sign. Boogie has improved my life tremendously. He just makes me happy, the happiest I've ever been. And I'm not alone, and so that he just completes me. Growing up without a father figure has its challenges. Like you just don't have that, that, that support system that you would and the advice that you need. And so it's just difficult. I don't ever want to be alone. That's another thing. I'm just, I just, maybe that's why I have stuffed animals. I just, I don't ever want to be alone. And so it's just nice to have company. And I help with the dogs. I get him. I get him his water. I, you know, like whatever he wants and requests. You know, I, I just mainly is to take care of him. He takes care of me. So yeah, sometimes I, I pick weeds out here. Take care so. of you though. Cause like it makes it look better. I'm trying to trim down these vines, but I'm not doing a good job. I don't do this very much. You know, I used to have a theory, Mike, that if you are a 40-year-old man and you have a Snapchat, that means you're a creepy dude. Turns out my theory was right. I have a Snapchat, and I am a creepy dude. I found that person, and they happened to be 20. And I get that it's creepy to date somebody half your age or younger, but... People can call me creepy if they want. If she's happy and I'm happy, then I will be the biggest creep you need me to be as long as her and I are happy. You can be as mad as you want. I just really hope he takes care of her. Really, though. And take care of him himself. Because as RuPaul says, how the hell are you going to love yourself? How the hell are you going to love someone else when you can't love yourself? Very true. Sexually. We both seem to be having an excellent time. I would say that it's the best I ever had. What? You are so... You are so I got a 
I love that this comes up. Because nice date night, cool, but that. Uh, a samurai on vacation? <laughs> I was going to ask if you could see it, but. <laughs> Here and I think, did you, uh, what are you, a YouTuber or something? Yeah, yeah, I've been uh, on YouTube for about 17 years. You've been on YouTube for 17 years. Yeah, about four million subscribers. Okay, and this is your my, my girlfriend. your girlfriend, who is much younger than you, is suspiciously. <laughs> she's, she's an adult. She's that you know, it's never good when you say, well, she's an adult. <laughs> is, this, is this a sex trafficking situation? I'm just kidding. They're at a comedy show, I guess. When people single us out, I hate it when people like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To be expected. You're right, we're different. But... Fuck them, right? Yeah, fuck them. Fuck them. He's not manipulating me. I love him for him. He doesn't control me. We're a team. He supports me in everything I do and everything I want. He's, he's my support system. What happens when he's gone? Let me get a McCrispy Deluxe combo. Make it large. What do I think about his dire financial situation? I think it's scary. Yeah, what's so scary about it? Um, that he might lose it all in a day. He might just be homeless one day, but. So if I'm broke, if I go broke, okay? If we end up back on disability and it's me, you, and Chad living in some small apartment and we're eating McDonald's every day and that's treating ourselves. You're gonna be able to handle that? Yeah, you I guess it's that? me, you, Chad, eat McDonald's every day in our small, cute apartment. Because, I mean, I'm hopeful that people will go back to watching us on YouTube. I hope that people will be, I'm hopeful that people will, like, you know, I can go back to live streaming full time again and do, like, six hour live streams like every other streamer and, like, grind it out. When you cling, in my head, I have a job. I have a professional career, but, and I feel like streaming is a bonus and it's nice and cool, nice, I can get paid a little bit here and there, but it's like, it's more for fun and stuff and when you take live streaming to cling on to it's like it's a real job, it is to some degree a real job, don't get me wrong, it's just, it's the merits of becoming one doesn't exist really it's just you either make it or you don't and when you cling to that you either really want it or you're very desperate but i mean there is a very real possibility that one day i won't be able to do that anymore and we're gonna have to live off of whatever we can are you prepared for that? As long as I have you, that's all I need. I don't know, but... Have you ever thought about the fact that she's just waiting you out and trying to take your 401k when you die? <laughs> I'm out, I, I, I'm broke. You're broke. I'm broke, yeah. Four million subscribers. <laughs> Even if he does go broke and has to sell the house, I'm still going to be by his side. He's the only one that I love and I care about, and there's only one of them. And so I'm not just going to up and leave him for money, because money's an issue. Because I love him, and just imagining a life without him is difficult. <laughs> it's like I mean, the biggest fear is dying on her. If I die in the next two or three years on her, that's just going to ruin her life. I really want you to understand how actually sick I am. Like, I don't know if you actually get it, but this is my health summary. This is 
everything that's currently wrong with me. My risk for stroke or heart attack is astronomical. I am essentially a walking time bomb. And I'm so fucking sorry for that. Holy fuck. <laughs> I really, really wish I had taken better care of my body. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll never be ready for it, but I know. <laughs> I don't want you to be alone. I don't want you to be alone. Okay. <laughs> I've talked to my therapist since me and her have been together about overcoming it. My therapist keeps telling me the same thing. When you learn to love yourself, all these things will fall into place and we just got to teach you those skills. And then I turn to my doctor and I'm like, what do we do? He's like, you've had bypass surgery. You, you lost 200 pounds. What more can I do for you? I'm like, fix it, dude, help fix it. And then they're telling me that I'm the one that has to fix it. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And I'm making less and less every month and I'm scared shitless. It's like that, it's that, it's like that movie Time with Justin Timberlake. Like, when time is done, you don't have enough currency. You're dead, you die. It's not that in real life though. No. Even if you have zero money, you can still have this home degree. Boogie receives an unexpected call. Making his way to the ring. Boogie tonight. Hey, so Mike, I just got off the phone with Keemstar, and he has a boxing event coming up, and he's giving me a slot on the card. You got it. This is 800 pounds in one ring. This fight pays $10,000. Oh. No chance against me. Shut the fuck up. People are going to see me win this thing. This is where I turn it all around. Right here. Oh my god. This is disgusting, right? This is... Very disgusting. I my first impression. The stage was set for Boogie's comeback. Oh shit! That's. Wait a second. Is that only use me blade? YouTube content creator back in the day. He was still paid 10000 So since you guys were here last, I did have a bit of a windfall, which bought me some time here in this house. And what about your the health? The problem with that is I spent more than 10000 getting that fight together. So by the time all that was done, all I did was put that $10,000 back into savings. Being in the new relationship is great, but I mean, she can't help pay a $2,200 mortgage. Okay, let's go through my monthly bills for a second. My health insurance is 800. I have $500 worth of medical bills. I have $500 worth of utilities. I, I pay for doctor's visits, physical therapies, labs constantly. I still have to pay for the car that I drive. I still have to pay for car insurance. I still have to pay for health insurance. Diablo 4 came out, I had to buy it. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 came out, I had to buy it. Tears of the Kingdom came out, I had to buy it. That's $400 worth of video games right there. But if you take out all of it, you take it out. All I eat is sandwiches every day. All I do is sit here. I don't pay for any Netflix subscriptions all I pay for is internet, utilities, medical bills, mortgage. If I pay for just that, I need $7,000 a month. I'm not making $7,000 a month, and I have no clue how to do it.
So there's something I've always wanted to try. There's a lot of research that came out of Europe and now we're doing it here in the United States where psychedelics can help reset certain brains. People who experience childhood abuse, people who've gone through trauma, people who deal with post-traumatic stress disorder, and I'm all of those. I, to be honest, I'm scared shitless. It's one of the only things I haven't tried yet. Drugs. So let's give it a shot. Doing mushrooms. We arranged a psychedelic ceremony conducted by a local shaman. My given name is Ryan Arthur DeLeo, and I've adopted the name Flaming Star. There's one thing that's undeniable, is that there's always this question about why. Why am I here? Existence. What's really happening? Who am I? That's what happens when you seek out hallucinogenics. It's gonna allow everything else physically here to relax. The emotional stuff is gonna come out. Trauma is gonna come out. But afterwards, your atoms are gonna go back into their original positions. That's why. It'll be mind, body, and spirit all one together. We're all connected. I believe when it. When you get to a certain point of understanding inside your intellect mind, that connectivity, you realize your hands are basically look like, like USB ports. So these are the, uh, it's crazy to think that something that just grows out of the ground has so much power and I'm actually holding it in my hand right now. But here we go. They don't taste bad. Honestly, that doesn't taste too bad. They're pretty good and dry. Every, everybody just says kind of earthy. Stim and all. Oh, the whole thing, yeah, yeah. Okay. Welcome to the club. May God bless you and be with you on your journey. <clears throat> <clears throat> Okay, so I think we've been about 20 minutes in. About 15, yeah. About 15. So we're about 15 minutes in, and I started to feel things are kind of wavy and kind of disconnected. It's kind of like my brain works on multiple channels, and like I have to pick and choose what I'm concentrating on. I am tripping I have no clue where the fuck I am or even who I am. I don't give a fuck. I recognize uh, He's about to experience the second part of the realization of letting go. And we're going to get to the other side of it. I told you they'd come. It's going to get nice and bright in about five more minutes. Yeah. And the reflection in the water is really cool, too. So what do you think was the first trauma that you experienced, which, you had, which basically set up like a defense mechanism for you? Man, yeah, my parents are just crazy. They're broken. I, I, uh, yeah, I just, I just hated that when you that you had to start the sentence. With, Man, it's just, I get it. Funny, yeah. Well, parents. <laughs> yeah, stewards. People who are like trying to, to, to. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? What? Like, they don't... I mean, that shit doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. That was the dumbest shit. Oh, and it happened so long ago. <laughs> like, I've just been waiting for the right time to just drop that shit. So, uh, when did you feel the need of this separate personality? Is that what, was that like what you used as a coping mechanism to socialize with? So, the, hold on, what, what's going on here? I've had conversations like this and just realizations of, oh shit, that's what's happening. But that, like, honestly, like, sure, if you do mushrooms, drugs, whatever, fine. I guess that helps you 
relax and disconnect from everything else. Just like no stress, no thoughts, no nothing. But I've had several conversations like this going on in my life where uh, with other people. Um, and I believe sometimes also with myself just realizing like, oh, because of this thing in the past is connecting to this. Damn, that makes a lot of sense. But maybe some people just need a little bit of a push, AK mushrooms. I don't know. Oh, that's exactly what oh I'm saying. Like, that's not the only I, way to get there. I don't know how to communicate what I was dealing with or what I was going through. And it's just really focusing on yourself for uh, like an hour or 30 minutes and really think back and self-reflect a lot and being completely honest with yourself. I just... Right. We put on these different faces in order to deal with situations in society. You try to give people what the hell they want. And then you felt like that was the need to make up Francis or other person. And the most important thing is you can't judge yourself. Personalities? Yeah. Are you ready to let all that go? Yeah, please, man. Oh my god. This is the first time I've ever felt happiness. I wait, 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 what? Happiness. <laughs> I, this is the first time I've felt it. Don't have to tell him, man. It's all kind of bullshit. It's all... This is... Okay, I can reflect back to myself with this. Uh, quick story. Two years ago. No, back in 2019. Before that, I had my own company. thought about money, money, money. Had myself a girlfriend. Then she cheated on me we but before she did i realized that i focused so much on just making money 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 to a point where i can't remember the last time i was happy uh, and then i well world of warcraft came out 27th of august i believe before that a couple like a week ago before that my colleague was like are you gonna play it i'm like nah i'm not gonna play it and then second guess a little bit start playing, realizing that that made me happy. Also realized that I haven't felt happiness in a long time, about two years. And that's not fair to the girlfriend, that's not fair to myself, but because of this wow thing that made me happy, I also got very disconnected and just trying to make myself happy and more ignoring my girlfriend to some degree, being completely honest. And to some degree, maybe that is why also because of the cheating. Uh, I went downhill, but at the same time, I also went, became more happy. Um, then I created Nova's Guild on WoW, and then from there, it's now looking back at it, because I've picked myself up, I also lost, lost my job, lost my apartment, what, 25 years old, went to back home, to my mother's place, 25 year old, or 26 year old, going back to living with their parents very embarrassing quit my job because i was super depressed or sad or whatever you want to call it made the guild played it for two years straight was super happy made a guild and then just had a lot of people connecting to the same thing like just being depressed or like it, you know sometimes real life is sh shitty it's a nice getaway that's hence novus and then now i still play it i sometimes think of stopping i've picked myself up again i'm living pretty decent now compared to then and achieved uh, a couple things that i'm proud of and i have this on the side now to make me happy to some degree that's balance and the reason why i don't want to stop playing world of warcraft is because i don't want to stop to some degree hanging out with these people Yeah. It's all bullshit. Just all the things I've been worried about. <laughs> because because you are going, the man. master of your own orchestra. But there's a lot more. There's also a lot more to me that I want to do. I was very ambitious, and I still am. Just gonna take time. So it's up to you to choose. The next day. Steven, are you, can you get up? Hello?
I'm still not sure I'm like really here yet. Yeah. The, the next day must feel weird I don't really as fuck. Want breakfast. That's just, that's a change. Jesus. Whew. Ooh, nice. Let's go. It's just all bullshit. Like, none of this matters. None of it. It's all a construct. It's all a simulation. It's all a... It's a fucking video game. You know when you die? I think I died last night. I physically, my body was fine, but I think I went back into the void we come from, and I think, uh, I think I'm still in it, except I'm also in this physical corporal body, but I'm also the incorporeal being that puppets it and controls it, and God damn it, I feel like I'm in control. I got I feel like I'm in control of myself for the first fucking time. The stuff that I, I normally worry about, like worrying about my finances, worrying about my internet, worrying about what people think. Is that about an honest me, smile? It's also incredibly stupid. Stuff that I. I The stuff that I, I normally worry about, like worrying about my finances, worrying about my internet, worrying about what people think about me, it's all so incredibly stupid. It's all just bullshit. I think I'm gonna enjoy making YouTube videos again. I think I'm gonna enjoy live streaming again. What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? Look at your 988 coming at your live is good to the power. When I make a video, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 people watch. That is still my dream job. Everybody falls off. That's part of the deal. Every single month. He had tons and tons of You start off as a nobody, and for a short period of time, you're a somebody, and then that star burns out like every star does. I was lucky enough to get hit by lightning. I was lucky enough to get to live my dream. I was lucky enough to get to enjoy all of that, play this game the way I wanted to play it. I'll be gone one day too, but for one brief moment, we we got an opportunity to shine really bright. Uh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was pretty good. Bye. Things I've ever seen. Like, so I remember the so OG 988 coming at you live once again. The power of the internet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jordan, that's amazing, dude. You genuinely believe that I can make a comeback? I did when I showed up. <laughs> but I'm slowly <laughs> realizing that uh, you're absolutely fucked. Okay. All right. So. Unfortunately. <laughs> He got pretty mad because he can't find his Mountain Dew. And I gotta be honest, the funniest part is he, he tried to find the Mountain Dew in the microwave. Oh my god.